Venus in Cancer. This is creating a new outlook on dealing with your feelings, your emotions, and the way you love, nurture, and care for people, places, and things around you in all circumstances and situations. Whether this be your close relatives, your bloodline relatives, or your overseas relatives. We all have different ways on how we love. We all have different ways on how we connect. We all have different ways on how we feel. So, of course, shit can get real. Because you got Mars, which is willpower, intent, motivation, dedication, desires, pretense. You got that in Cancer. Also, you have Venus in Cancer. So, of course, this is dealing with squares and oppositions. But opposites attract. And, of course, we all need squares in life to be able to actually find the key out of that box and not be too boxed into life or circumstances and situations. And of course, you got to always be open to receiving opposite energies. Because of course, this is you as a reflection on the other side of pretenses. So when you got Venus and Cancer, we all are going to be experiencing comfortability where we can find love, nurturing, and caring. And of course, this is dealing with Cancer, which is the moon. This is the carnal perspective, which means to come up with new ways on how to feel. So it's going to be new ways on how we're going to be feeling. It's going to be new ways on how we're going to be seeing. It's going to be new ways on how we're going to be finding equilibrium, harmony, and balance when it comes to relationships in general. So this is a circumstance situation where everybody needs to find the comfortability, whether it's with a person, whether it's with a thing, or whether it's with a place. It don't matter if you're single or with a relationship right now. You need to find equilibrium. You need to find ways on how to switch it up. You need to find new ways on how to try new things. Because, of course, everything don't stop or start in your perspective. Everything is forever fulfilling. All spaces need to be fulfilled. So, of course, there's always a way how we come up with new ways on how to arrange things in life in general. And, of course, you can't have a outworn couch or outworn bed for too damn long. You gotta learn how to come up with a new way on how to put that kitchen and put that perspective into a different mechanism. So if you're not into these categories and if you don't know the stars then of course you just a naive star. And of course your star won't be into the highest star, higher space constellation. It may take time for you to be able to actually keep experiencing shit until you actually truly get into your true initiative bag. And of course this ain't no circumstance situation of being misguided as long as long as you believe in yourself everything can basically be working out to your perspective but let's get into venus and cancer and your houses and your zodiacs and of course most importantly how y'all gonna be express experiencing these energies so off the rip when you got venus and cancer in your first house the way you love, the way you compromise, the way you initiate, the way you are passionate is going to be predicated towards your personality. See, when you have this perspective here, your personality can be lopsided because you can pretty much put yourself in a circumstance situation of being on the opposite end of the coin because Venus don't really like being here. But of course, it's always going to be indecisiveness when it comes to your personality or how you do things. <clears throat> of course, you're going to always be picking up guilt and worry if you're not pertaining to yourself when it comes to love and nurturing and caring. So, of course, you need to love, nurture, and care yourself in a new organic way. You need to find a new way on how to value yourself or compromise with yourself or your personal circumstances or your personal equations or your personal mathematics or wh whoever you got in your motherfucking coin, your, um, your space, your circle. You need to um, find a new way how to love, nurture, and care, and find comfortability with, when it comes to your personality, when it comes to you expressing love in general. And of course, you don't know how to do this. Now is the time to basically find ways on how to switch up, initiate a new way how to do it. And of course, when you got an uh, Aries perspective, this is square. You're gonna be dealing. With, you're gonna be dealing with conflict on how to express love. If that's only it. That's only if you have a Venus in Aries. If you have a Venus in Aries, they're going to be dealing with a square perspective, dealing with conflict, because you're going to be all about doing things in a direct manner versus VIA, Cancer, doing things in an indirect manner. Things may be hidden. So, of course, it can be a square with this perspective. That's if you're Venus in Aries. If you got um, that perspective. Now, if you got 
Venus and Cancer in the second house, you're going to be basically valuing, loving, nurturing, caring, and of course, finding compromises with the things you value, people that you value, places that you value, and of course, resources that you value. Now, these resources, you can basically go to the full extent by basically jumping off the bridge and being a curious George when it comes to circumstances and situations. Try not to do that. Because, of course, if these people are not truly valued, valuing you, or if you don't really truly value these people, then your ass shouldn't be out there trying to compromise with these motherfuckers. Learn how to, like, basically separate yourself from circumstances and situations, and you will better, much premature and premeditate yourself in a better circumference. Now, if you got Venus and Taurus, you're going to be receiving all the love, all the care, all the love, all the nurturing, all the perspectives in your perspective. So be open for these energies because you have opportunities. Now, be open for that. If you got Venus in Gemini, I mean, I'm bugging. If you got Venus in the third house, you're going to be coming up with new ways of how to love, nurture, care, and of course, find compromises when it comes to your familiar faces, familiar places, and people, places, and things that you are accustomed to. So this is going to be a circumstance situation where you're going to see the other side of the coin. May not be too emotionally, but of course, you can. You may fuck around and fuck with your best friend during this time, or someone that you're familiar with, or fucking, or you may fuck fuck on the, or fuck on the neighbor during this time. That's that's how I can partake. So be aware of these energies, and of course, if you got Venus in Gemini, you're gonna be seeing the other side of the Venus and Cancer frequencies, vibrations, and energies, and of course, it's gonna be kind of lopsided because. You got retrograde in this perspective. So you may <clears throat> go back to previous surroundings of friends that you fucked with, previous surroundings of whoever you fucked with. You know what I mean? You may go back to the normal stuff. So be aware of that shit. And of course, if they not in your circle now, they don't need to be coming in your box now. If you got Venus in Cancer, you're going to be loving. Well, I'm bugging. If you got Venus in the fourth house, you're going to be loving, nurturing, and caring. Of course, being more passionate towards family, private matters, and emotions. You may go to the extreme lifts though in the sound. And of course, try not to separate yourself and try not to hold back. Because of course, the energies is here. And of, all, and of course, you got a lot of planets in the moon. And of course, the moon is always traveling fast. So it's picking up fast emotions, fast endeavors. And of course, you're picking up everybody's surroundings, everybody initiatives. So try to like find mental health clarity for yourself and you'll be at it. Now, if you got Venus and Cancer, you're going to be picking up all the love. And you're going to be distributing all the love. Now, if you got Venus in the fifth house, you're going to be expressing your love, your nurturing, your care, and of course, the way you compromise. See, now, this is going to be a circumstance situation where you're going to be seeing the other side of the coin. And you got to make adjustments. And you'll be high. Now, if you don't make adjustments, you may lock, you may show, forge a very short in this perspective. You don't want that. So get yourself ready. And you express yourself. And of course, you need, you need to express and love, nurture, and care. Not to be not to be the one that's in the, in the line like, trying to receive all this. You got to find a good living and balance. You, what you put out is what you get. Real shit. Now, Venus in the fifth house. Now, Venus in the Leo. You're going to be seeing the other side of love, nurture, and care when it comes to compromisation. So make these adjustments and you'll be at it. Now, Venus in the sixth house. You're going to be basically loving, nurturing, and caring. You may go to the extremes by going... With these things, with the details, daily routines, and responsibilities, or being a service and kind of generous to people. Try not to go overboard, and you'll be at it. Venus and Virgo, you're going to have opportunities to receive and love, nurture, and care, and be a service and kind of generous to people. Venus in the seventh house, you're going to be going to the extremes when it comes to love, nurture, and caring <coughs> for, for relationships, partnerships, people that you endeavor, people that you value, people that you compromise, compromise with. You may be compromising with strangers on this time, too. Be cautious and aware of that. Now, if you got Venus and Libra, you're going to be dealing with conflict when it comes to love and when it comes to rationality. Which one you got to find? You got to find the equilibrium and balance. You'll be at it. Venus in the eighth house, you're going to be basically loving, loving, compromising, and of course going to the extremes by being deeply rooted into your desires. You may get lost into your desires. You may get lost into all kind of acts. You try not to do that during this time because it may fuck you over extremely. You'll be at it. Venus and Scorpio, you're going to have opportunities. AKA, AKA you're gonna have a gift to transform shit when it comes to love matters. Venus in the ninth house, you're gonna be going to the extreme matters when it comes to broad, philo broad philosophical points of views, philosophies, um, wisdom, enthusiasm, and things of that nature. You're gonna go, you're gonna be very passionate towards these things. 
Try not to be passionate over the click. Be the act. Being this and tragic too, you're going to be dealing with misunderstandings. So the way you love, preach, and teach, and compromise is going to be in a different perspective, different matter. You may come off very unwise or unsound. Well, people may see you unwise. And, uh, yeah. Venus in the 10th house. You're going to be loving and compromising when it comes to your status, your career, your business, and your goals. So you're going to be dealing with a whole lot of fucking rocks and bricks and shit. You're going to be stepping on rocks. And bricks going to be falling on your perspective. There's going to be a whole lot of shit going on with you. Try to find balance and equilibrium. Try to, like, use more feelings and emotions and more love and caring and be a Venus and Capricorn, you're going to be dealing with opposite energies when it comes to love. Love and caring matters during this perspective. So try to like be calm, cool, and collective. Cause you you're gonna be on a you're gonna be on a um demon, the devil side of energy. If you're not in the right frequency vibrations and energies. You know, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna do that. Venus in the eleventh house. You're gonna be basically loving, compromising when it comes to associations and associates during this time and during this phase. Try not to put yourself in a circumstance situation of being out there or being too generous. And during this time or separating yourself from me try to get out there try to be unique and original with expressing your endeavors and of course try not to um be in a circumstance situation of making acquaintances that you cannot keep aka try to try not to be making promises that you can't keep try to get organized with your association and your association put yourself in a circumstance situation of being in a compromisation and a love and a caring perspective on this side but learn how to actually love and care for yourself because you're going to be giving your all to yourself because you can be too humanitarian during this time and shit. And of course, you can jump off a cliff by being too visionary and shit. People, places, and things can basically be taking advantage of you in this perspective. So if you got Venus in the 11th house, yeah, you need to associate yourself. You need to associate yourself by loving and nurturing and caring for the people, places, and things that you associate yourself with in general on a day-to-day -day basis. So you need to basically find your equilibrium and find a balance. And of course, if you could do this, the universe and God could basically welcome you new experiences and new consciousness and new groupmanships and new circumstances and new situations and of course your house is your house lord is how it's gonna play out now if you got venus and aquarius you're gonna be dealing with misunderstandings you're gonna be expressing yourself in a misunderstandable way so it's gonna go vice versa what you're pushing out is what you're gonna get back so get yourself right for this perspective and you'll be right and you won't be they won't be neglected when it comes to venus and the 12th house you're gonna be loving compromising and of course being passionate towards your dreams, your imaginations, and of course, your fantasies. Try not to put yourself, put yourself in a circumstance situation of being all over the place or being in a circumstance situation of loving and caring or being putting yourself on the back burner because you're going to basically have rose colored glasses on. You, you, you may be fucking picking up the hearts of your exes during this time. You, you, may, you may just be the Jesus cross, Jesus Christ of this motherfucker. You may be trying to save everybody. You're the one that's going to put yourself on that motherfucking cross. You're the one that's going to jump off that bridge. You're the one that's going to get caught up into some bullshit. You're the one that's going to get caught up into scenarios and circumstances and situations if you don't value the right dream. You're going to be valuing the wrong shit. And if you don't, you don't need to be valuing the wrong shit during this time. You need to be valuing and compromising and having equilibrium and balance during this time because Venus is all about equilibrium, fairness, and justice. So if you don't see fair play, and if you're very hard to basically understand and understand that perspective, the motherfucker, you got a wrong, you got a wrong thing coming. Of course, you got retrograde in this perspective. So love matters. It's going to either pop back up. Circumstances, situations, or previous perspectives is going to pop right back up. Like pop tarts. When you put that bitch in the toaster, yeah, your ass going to get toasted during this time. Your spirit, your soul, your feelings, your emotions, your intuition can get toasted during this time. So don't be a toaster. Your ass going to get worse, bro. So put yourself in the circumstance situation of finding balance and equilibrium when it comes to dreams, imaginations, fantasies, and illusions. Try to not go over and indulging with these things because once Venus gets into Leo, you need to express these things and not be passive aggressive with these things. But you can, of course, you're going to be dreaming and fantasizing about matters of someone that you can connect with on a day to day basis that's dealing with a nice place, a nice waterfall, a nice, in, in, um, a nice enthusiasm. A nice sweet, a nice telly, or you might get in the belly, or you might fantasize of being in her belly. But of course, that's how it's going to play out. But if you got Venus and Pisces, you're going to have the gift to put yourself in a compromising, overindulging state. And of course, you don't want to overindulge because you need to find moderation. If you don't find moderation, well, goddamn, tomorrow will be Friday. And of course, Saturday is all about equilibrium, all about balance, and of course, Ramadan.